Alrighty, boys and girls, so here we go. The 2022 MLS regular season officially kick off tomorrow, and we kick off with nine games that's going to be happening tomorrow and five more that's going to be happening on Sunday as part of a full slate of opening weekend of the MLS 2022 regular season. And this year, in terms of the preview, I'm actually going to make these preview a little bit shorter than I done in previous season and there's a couple of reasons why I decided to do this well the reason is that you know I noticed the preview tends to have the lowest viewership out of most of my video and I feel like you know a way to maybe fix that is trying to make these preview a little bit shorter but also I feel like I need to make these preview look a little bit more clean because I feel like when I look at my past preview that I've done it's kind of a bit of a mess in ter terms of what was on the board I mean when I do the review it is kind of the same thing but it makes sense because in the review that's when I of course put the notes down and I feel like one of the thing that I'm definitely going to cut out this year with the preview is I'm not even going to like put like some of the small points talking about how the what the previous team resort is like Columbus win win two nothing against Montreal in the previous match. I I don't think that's something that a lot of people re really care about because you know I'm pretty sure people people would know about this and especially if you're a fan of of the team you would know what the resort was last time. So for this season again, it's all about stats that I'm gonna talk about in the preview and because I am gonna be doing these preview a little bit shorter and don't go go as too in depth as I would do before i'm not going to actually do a timestamp in terms of these games in fact this is actually going to be one of the lo longest preview if not the longest preview i'm going to do this season because i am going back to what i've done before with the preview and review where i'm going to try to do kind of like a preview of eight games that's going to be happening on saturday and then the very next day i'll do a preview of the next four games that's going to be happening on sunday but because it is the opening weekend i want to kind of do a a preview of all 14 games and not to mention the fact that on Sunday I am going to be going to Seattle to watch the Sounders take on Nashville SC and I don't really have a lot of time tomorrow consider you not only have to watch games but I'm also attending the Quakes opener between them and the New York Rebels and by the time I get home I gotta quickly do the the review before I gotta go to bed because my flight to Seattle is actually 6 40 in the morning but that being said, with that little spiel out of the way, let us actually get into the first game of the 2022 MLS regular season. And just like last year, where the first game of the season involved one of my team, it's the case once again. Uh, this time, it's Minnesota going on the road against the Philadelphia Union, and the first game will kick off uh, bright and early in the morning here in the West Coast, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern, and the actual kickoff is 1.08 p.m. local time. The Union last season, they finished second with a 14-12-8 record of 73 points, while Minnesota, they finished fifth last season with a 13-10-11 record and finished with 49 points. Of course, the Union lost to NYCFC in the conference final, while Minnesota lost to the Portland Timbers in the first round. All-time meeting, this is the fifth meeting between both of these teams. The Union has a slight edge in this meeting with a 2-1-1 one, one record over Minnesota. And then in the last three, three meetings, yeah, you know, no, it seemed... Besides the free to win that, that Minnesota has against the Union, the Union kind of dominated this series a little bit, uh, winning 3-2 against Minnesota on the road before winning 5-1 against Minnesota. And also, when the Union beat Minnesota 3-2 in that game, they were the first opponent to able to get a win against Minnesota at Allianz Field. I mean, up to that point, nobody was able to beat the Loons at Allianz Field. And this is kind of the reason why when Allianz Field was open in the first seat, season that was such a for fortress for this team but yeah you know hopefully this season the loons will get a better start compared to last season i mean i'm assuming it's got to be, be better consider you know when you look at this team and some of the signings that they made i trust the fact that ho hopefully amaria is going to be the 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 answer in terms of fixing our goal scoring vote uh speaking of goal scoring vote for the union uh they do have a setback coming into this game because their new dp striker michael root uh, he actually had some visa issues, so he's not going to be playing in this game. So it looks like it's going to be Julian Carranza, the one that's going to be leading up the line, unless they decided to play a false nine position. And it's going to be interesting to see how Carranza is going to do. And I'm pretty sure Carranza is going to play hard in this game because, you know, I've said before, I think that move that Union made this this offseason, it's actually a good, good move. I mean, some people might think it's not because of how bad Carranza was with Miami, 
well, you know, the reason why he was bad at Miami was he he was he was with a team that was just completely lost and have a coaching staff that is nowhere near as good as what the U is. I mean, I have a feeling with Carranza getting a new change of scenery, joining uh, a coaching staff and Jim Curran, he's going to definitely may have have much more success compared to his time where it feels like it, his career, career was looking to be be in ru ruins with how, how how much of a mess he was with that team um, a couple of years ago. Uh, now, moving on, in terms of the next match, is Columbus versus the Vancouver Whitecaps, which will kick off 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, the actual kickoff is 3.38 p.m. local time. Columbus, ninth place, finished last season with a 13-8-13 record and finished with 47 points. And, you know, again, according to the Caleb Porter pattern, that's kind of how, how it is, where when you, of course, made it to the playoffs one year, the very next season, you missed the playoffs. Now, speaking of playoffs, the Whitecaps actually ma made it to the playoffs and finally ended their playoff drought by finished sixth place and finished with a record of 12. Uh, actually, this is this is incorrect. It's actually 12, 9, and, and 13, and not 12, 13, and 9. They, 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 or actually, no, that is correct. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I look at, I probably look at, at, at the, um, uh, I, I got confused with, with this middle number thinking it's the loss when indeed it's actually the draw. And they finished with 49 points la last season. Remember last year, uh, they, they part, part ways in the mi middle of the season uh, with Marco Santos. And then the Vanny Sartini vibe, of course, or push this team to the playoffs. And uh, again, I'm very interested to see how, how Sartini is going to do in his first season with the Whitecaps. All-time meeting between... Both of these teams, uh, the Whitecaps actually lead the all-time meeting with a 5-3-2 and two record over Columbus. Uh, in the last three, it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams. Vancouver actually won 2-1 on the road against Columbus before it was a 2-2 draw between the Whitecaps and Columbus. And one thing I also want to mention is that there is a lot of interconference matchup that's going to happen this weekend. In fact, it's kind of weird to say, but if there is going to be a matchup where it's going to be in conference, I'm going to kind of say it's a... It's a rare matchup, which is crazy because usually interconference matchup, especially from what we saw last season, where it seems like every team can only play against two teams from the other conference, it was a very rare sighting. But I guess maybe MLS this season decided that, yeah, we're not going to have that. We're just going to have as much interconference matchup as possible. And there you go. This is one of the many that is going to happen. And it's also going to be interesting to see this interconference matchup too because a lot of these interconference matchup it has not happened for for a long time. Like this this matchup, I don't think it has happened since since the 2019 season. Obviously, both of them didn't play in the 2020 shortened season. And then last year, uh, I don't think, think, think Columbus um, was playing against Vancouver as one of the two Eastern Conference teams. Um, actually, going back to this game between the Union and Minnesota, the, uh, both of these teams actually face off against each other in the interconference matchup. And I think that might be the only interconference matchup that we saw. We we seen this week that um that we actually saw saw last year because again it was very rare to see these kind of interconference matchup last season. Now moving on, we got LAFC versus the Colorado Rapids, and unfortunately, this is the first of what would be many dreaded Twitter stream that's going to be happening in the MLS season. I mean, like I said, I can't wait until they they get the new broadcast deal and get rid of Twitter stream because you know my opinion in terms of that. But yeah, this game will start at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 p.m. Pacific. But the actual kickoff, it's the usual Twitter start time in the matinee game of 12.50 p.m. local time uh, in the West Coast. Uh, for LAFC, they finished ninth with a 12-9 and 13 record with 45 points. While Colorado, they finished first with a 17-10 and 7 record with 61 points. All-time meeting, LAFC has pretty much dominated this meeting with a 4-0 and 2 meeting. Uh, but the last three, you know, the last time both of these teams met, which was on Decision Day, and I think this is one of two matchups that was a matchup happening on Decision Day that turns out to be the first game of the season. Yeah, Colorado ran right against LAFC see, uh, at Dick's Sporting Good Park. Uh, put up five spot against LAFC by winning 5-2. But before that, it was a 2-1 win that LAFC had against Colorado, and then LAFC had a 3-1 win against the Rapids. And overall, LAFC have def definitely dominated. The, the Rapids uh, when the game is played at Bank of California Stadium. And I feel like this is going to be the same case again. I mean, I don't know if the Rapids have, have recovered from that shock, embarrassing defeat that they had in, in what is called the Snow Classical CCL edition against Comunicaciones. 
and I think LAFC is going to definitely take a advantage of that. Uh, but now moving on, we got FC Dallas versus Toronto FC, which will start at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. But the actual kickoff, a weird kickoff time, 4.41 p.m. local time. I mean, again, I don't think I've ever seen a, a kickoff time like that, that weird before. But yeah, Dallas last season, uh, they finished 11th in the standing with a 7-12 and 15 record and finished with 33 points. Obviously, one of the worst season that FC Dallas has had in the past couple of years. But that goes the same for Toronto FC. I mean, they had a record that they have not seen um, but not seen since the days when they were, were considered a regular bottom feeder when they came into the league. Finished 13 in the standings and only won 6 games with a 6-10 and 18 record and finished with 28 points. All-time meeting, uh, Dallas actually dominates this meeting. 11-5-2 and two over Toronto in terms of the all-time meeting. And in terms of the last three, Dallas, of course, winning 3-0 against TFC. Uh, Dallas, of course, winning one nothing on the road against Toronto, and then uh, Dallas winning at home three one against Toronto FC. And again, this is another matchup that it's been a while since both of these teams have played against each other. But obviously, the most interesting thing coming into this match is the matchup between two new head coaches. You know, N Nico Estevez with FC Dallas, and then Bob Bradley now with Toronto FC. And I always love to see these ki kind of matchup when two for first uh, or these two head coach with their new team play playing against each other but especially the fact that this is the fir first game for their their respective club so yeah we'll see how that of course will turn out but now moving on to the bottom row which this bottom row is going to be be kickoff time time between 6 p.m eastern 3 p.m pacific so you know that pretty much just saved me from to always talk about what is the kickoff time time in this although you know this one the actual kickoff is 508 since these two are east coast game the actual kickoff is 608 and then the one that I'm going to be attending, since it's a West Coast game, will we'll kick off at 3.08 p.m. as the actual kickoff. But we'll start with this one, which is Austin FC versus FC Cincinnati. And this is one of a couple of matchups that we're going to see for the very first time, time on opening weekend. Again, you know, when we do not have a lot of these kind of inter-conference matchups last season, you're going to see some, some of these kind of matchups where it's the first time that has e ever happened. And in this case, for Austin FC, um, you know, they're again, they're playing FC Cincinnati for the very first time. And last season for Austin in their expansion year, uh, it was an okay expansion season. I mean, yes, I know when you look at the standings, it's not good. But when you look at, at how, how they they rebound themselves in the second half of the season and finish with a respectable 9-4 and 21 record, it's not bad. I mean, it... it it's that definitely kind of what they kind of had, had gone through a very normal kind of expansion season and look to to try to improve that. Whereas for FC Cincinnati, yeah, they didn't want to 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 kind kind of ask how Austin maybe can 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 be a a team that came into the league or at least in the early years in MLS to be a respectable team because in their their first free season in MLS, three straight wins, but uh, they finished. Uh, when Wooden Spoon uh, last season and had their worst season out of the three Wooden Spoon that they won. Only winning four games with a 4-8 and 22 record and finished with 20 points. And you know for a fact that they're desperate to try to change that. And one way to do it is to get a win in, in this game. Though it's not going to be easy because, you know, Austin themselves, they also want, want to prove that, you know, hey, last season, you know, the, the, the good run that they had in the second half of the season, which I believe when you look at the stats of how they performed the second half of the season, uh, they were actually, actually on, on point to be, be a playoff team if you kind of eliminate what happened in the first half of the season. But again, we'll, we, we said it before, just because the team performed well in the second half of the season doesn't mean it actually translates into the new year. And then, of course, if that team did not make it to the playoffs. Uh, now, moving on, in terms of the next match, and a match, I think, is one of the more anticipated matchup of this opening weekend. And that, of course, is DC United playing against Charlotte FC. And the reason why this is so in intriguing is because this is officially Charlotte FC's first ever game. And we're going to see how, how they're going to do in their, their first ever game after, yeah, this offseason and their life leading up to MLS has been a very, very rocky one. I mean, I'm really hoping that they don't get absolutely destroyed in this game because you know DC we know we know with with her and Lasada he loves to 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 run that kind of high octane kind of style and you know I will say that at least Charlotte does maybe ha has the defense to to basically 
perfectly handled that. But if, if that is not the case, they could be in for a rude awakening. And they could be maybe in, in, a, in, in for a situation where they would lose, lose so badly that, you know, it's going to be on verge of what happened when Minnesota came into the league. Where Remember when the Loons came into the league in 2017 and they got a rude awakening in their first two games where they lost 5-1 against Portland and they lose 6-1 against fellow expansion team um, Atlanta United? Uh, that could be be the case, maybe for Charlotte FC two, especially with the way that yeah, again you know they they're coming into the season very sh- short handed and probably are still short handed even with the recent signing of Daniel Rios. Now um, coming into this game, DC of course finished eighth in the standing with a fourteen five and fifteen record and finished with forty seven points. And as I mentioned, Charlotte FC this is their first season and really the first game in their franchise history and. Again, I think the goal for this game is that just don't get absolutely embarrassed. I mean, we know that records in terms of expansion team playing their very first game is not good whatsoever. I mean, the last time an expansion team were able to win their opening game was LAFC against Seattle back in 2018. But before that, you know, you have to really dig dig deep in terms of looking at when exactly the last team actually won, won their first game as an expansion team. I think it was the Whitecaps, the one that, that the only... Uh, other expansion team that I can recall that won their first first game uh, of their their expansion season. So it doesn't come come often, and it seems like that this might be be once again the the case that will follow the trend where I think DC should be able to beat Shard in this one. Now moving on in terms of the next match is Inter Miami versus the Chicago Fire. So Miami last season finished in 11th place with a 12-5 and 17 record and finished with 41 points and that's when they kind of decided that yeah this core that they they built in the expansion season is just not it they completely nuked nuked it and now now are kind of like like Charlotte FC where they're also kind of in in expansion season life with the way that they 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 completely revamp their their squad and I would say that goes the same for the Chicago Fire too in fact I would say that this is a game between two teams that are kind of rebuilding heading into this season. Though I did say before where Chicago is not really rebuilding this year. They kind of retool with some of the moves that they made. But with the way that both of these teams kind of blow up their squad. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how 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 you know some of these new players from each of these these teams that have never never played for the team would do on their debut. And again, you're also going to see a lot of, uh, of debut with a lot of these players playing their first game for their respective club. Uh, for Chicago, they finished 12th last season, 9-7 and 18 record, and finished with 34 points. Again, just like Miami, Chicago realized that, yeah, this current core that they have is just not it. They decided to blow it up and kind of retool a little bit by getting some some nice pieces doing this offseason. I mean, guys like Shakiri and Shabilko are some of the na- notable names they got in the offseason. Now, in terms of the all-time meeting, this is only the third meeting between both of these teams. And both of these teams, of course, getting a win apiece. Uh, Miami, me, of course, won 3-2 against Chicago, whereas uh, last season Chicago was able to win one nothing against Inter Miami. But yeah, again, you know, this is going to be an interesting matchup because of the way that there's a lot of players are making their debut with their team, and we'll see who, of course, is going to have the better, who are going to have the player that going to make a better debut to, of course, get a win in this game. And then finally, uh, the last game on on this board is the game that I'm going to be be going to tomorrow and one of the two games that I'm going to be going on the opening weekend. I mean, it is very rare for me to go to two different game in in the same match week. And that, of course, is the case for this opening weekend. But this, of course, is the first game I'm going to go in in the 2022 season. And that, of course, is watching the San Jose Earthquakes taking on the New York Red Bulls. And, you know, again, this is a matchup. It's been a while since the Quakes have played against the Red Bulls. But it has not been great memories for the Quakes. Quakes when they play against the Red Bulls. In fact, you know, uh, besides the all-time meeting when the the Quakes, of course, had have they still do have an advantage with an 18-9 and 15 record over the Red Bulls. The last three meeting, it's been ugly. I mean, the Red Bulls were able to win 4-1 against the Quakes the last time both of these teams met against each other. And I remember that was the game when the Quakes actually led one nothing early in the game, and we thought that yeah, maybe it looked like they're in for an upset. Uh no, they gave a four straight goal to lose in classic Quakes. That fashion and then uh oh classic quakes fashion on the road and then of course they lost 3-1 at home against the red bulls before getting absolutely steamrolled by the red red bulls 5-1 on the road and that that was a 
believe that was the season. I think that was in 2017, uh, late in the year, uh, when when Chris Leach was the head coach. And you know, while Chris Leach, of course, was doing a good job in in term terms of at least winning his home game, yeah, his road record was not good whatsoever. And that was also a team where you know, when ba things go bad, yeah, it really can can go bad. Now, in terms of last season, you know, the Quakes they finished with with a a record of 10, 11, and 13 and finished with uh, finish in 10th place in the West with 41 points. Whereas for the New York Red Bulls, they finished 7 last season with a 13, 9, and 12 record. And they finished with 48 points. And yeah, you know, cer certainly I would say that this is also a game between two head coaches that seems to hate their front office right now. I mean, I'll talk about the Almeida situation of how, how he is definitely hinting that, yeah, this is definitely going to be his last season. But don't forget about Gerard Stuber, who I heard that there is quietly, you know, Stuber. At least he's not as, as critical as what Almeida is basically saying in public. But he has kind of quietly said that he hates this 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 Red Bulls front office and that he he feels like he need he he's not get getting the money to of course make the signings that he needs. So yeah, I guess this is going to be interesting to see how this game, of course, would would go with you know both of their head coach. Doesn't seem like they like like their team what whatsoever and you know uh, it would be it would be so 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 classic when that of course is the case that this game is probably going to end up in a a boring nil nil draw but that being said i am now going to switch boards and look at the last six games that's going to be happening on the opening weekend of the mls season so now moving on into the last Saturday game of the opening weekend's action is the first national televised game of the season between the Portland Timbers versus the New England Revolution, which will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 4.55 p.m. local time. And this game, of course, is going to be on Fox. And fingers crossed that this game is not going to be interrupted midway, or maybe uh, this game is going to not show on Fox, at least for the first 20 minutes because apparently Fox maybe have enough not another sports to to show and maybe that sport kind of overlaps itself and that they they don't allow to show MLS game because you know that are other sports which in the case of that game between Seattle versus Montego and CCL was probably called college basketball. Now uh, in this game, uh, this actually is a game that came very close of being a an MLS Super Cup because you know the refs winning the supporter shield, the Timbers were in MLS Cup. And if they would have won MLS Cup against NYCFC, then this definitely would, would classify as a Super Cup. But yeah, last season the Timbers, uh, when they they prior to them making MLS Cup, they finished fourth in the regular season with a 17, 4, and 13 record with 55 points. Well, the refs, of course, having a record regular season, finishing in first and winning the Supporters Shield with a 22, 7, and 5 record, and finished with 73 points. All-time meeting between both of these teams. Well, believe it or not, there's been a lot of draws in terms of the these two, two the when these two teams meet each other. Seven of the ten all-time meeting actually have ended in a draw, with the Timbers having a slight advantage in the win category with with two wins compared to one that New England has had. And the last three pretty much just summarize that there's been a lot of draws in in this meeting because it was a two-two draw between both of these teams, and then a one-one draw between both of these teams, and then another one-one draw between both of these teams and you know we could maybe aim for for another draw too because you know there's really not much separate right this game and and that i expect this should also be a, a relatively entertaining game to watch and probably one of the fir first first heavyweight matchup because you know both of these teams are going to be considered mls cup contender and we shall see who of course will emerge coming out of this game now moving on in terms of the sunday action which we will have five games that is going to be happening on Sunday. And it all start with Orlando City taking on Montreal. So this is another matchup that happened on Decision Day. That turns out to be the first game of the new season. Uh, but yeah, this game of course will start at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. But the actual kickoff is 108 p.m. local time. Orlando last season, you know, they finished 6th in the Eastern Conference with a 13, 12, and 9 record. And finished with 51 points. While for Montreal, they finished 10th in the standings. And... Uh, finished with 12, 10, and 12 record, and finished with 46 points. Though Montreal would have made it to the playoffs if they actually were able to beat Orlando City on that decision day game. So you know that they definitely want some revenge coming out of this game. Though one well, of the big concern coming out of this game for Montreal is that are they going to have a letdown after after that incredible performance that they had against Santos? I mean, 
you know, it's only been a couple of days since they ha had that incredible performance against Santos, and it's definitely not e easy to have a quick turnaround after such a big hi historic victory that, that they had, and then ba basically carry that into MLS form. I and mean, this is also kind of the other reason why I say when CCO team, uh, or when MLS team goes to CCO and they go deep in, in the competition, it's not just because of the fact that they don't have the team to compete with, but if those MLS team have a massive game, or maybe if they have a situation where they come up with a big victory, uh, it can they can definitely have a, a big hung up, hangover and maybe even even a huge letdown heading into the next game where they might not play as good as they had lap in the last game. And this kind of might be the case for for this one against Montreal. And and you know it's not going to be easy that you're going to have a hangover against an Orlando City team that definitely are looking to try to get off to a good start. Now, in terms of the all-time meeting, uh, it's actually dead even at seven apiece in terms of wins between both of these teams with free draw. Last free meeting, it was Orlando winning 2 nothing against Montreal as part of that decision day game. There was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams, and then Montreal, of course, winning 4-2 against Orlando City. So, yeah, again, it's going to be interesting to see how this game, of course, is. I think Orlando is going to be head favorites because of the fact that, you know, not only they're playing at home, which last season they, they were relatively good at home but also the fact that they're going to be playing against a Montreal team that might be a little bit hungover after that that incredible victory they had against Santos Laguna in CCL now moving on in terms of the next match is Atlanta United versus Sporting KC so this is another game that is kind of a, a bit of a heavyweight ma matchup early season matchup as uh, both of these teams definitely had some MLS Cup aspiration though in the case of Sporting KC they definitely have more as aspiration can consider how last season of course ended for them uh this game will start at 3 p.m eastern 12 p.m pacific actual kickoff is 308 or 3 not 308 305 p.m p.m uh star i don't know why i say 308 8 there there or you said it in kind of a weird accent but yeah uh the this game will start at 305 p.m in this one and uh this game of course is going to be on fs1 again fingers crossed that hopefully there's no no mid-game in insure Interruption during this one and that goes the same about the next game. I'm going to talk about I mean these national televised game They better not not have have a situation where they they interrupt in the middle of the game because they have to kind of maybe show some college basketball Action in the middle of the the game, but yeah coming into this game uh, Atlanta of course last season They finished fifth with a 13 12 and 9 record and finished with 51 points while for sporting KC they finished third in the standings, 17 7 and 10 and finished with 58 points all-time meeting between both of these teams, it, it, um, it's actually only the fourth meeting between both of these teams. And both of these teams have exactly one win apiece and one draw apiece. So pretty much perfectly balanced of how this game, of course, is going to be. And you could also say this is kind of like a rubber match to see who can get the advantage of the all-time meeting. But yeah, uh, the last free meeting, it was Atlanta winning 3-0 on the road against Sporting KC. And then Sporting KC winning 2-0 on the road against Atlanta and in the very first meeting it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams so road team tends to fa be favorites coming into this game which is kind of odd because usually home teams are are the one that that you expect, expect to dominate in the all-time series but that's not the case in this one and again we'll see how this of course of course will 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 go with both both of these teams facing off against each other but now moving on into the the last uh national televised game of this opening weekend which will be between the LA Galaxy versus NYCFC I mean it's it's obvious that the Galaxy has to be on national television in fact uh the two LA team I believe this season have the most national televised game and it's not a big surprise because you know I know the league love their LA team and especially with the way that that so they they still feel like both of those LA team is going to make some some noise they're going to put them on national television for a lot of these games I mean they could have done it for their New York team and I think they also did it for with NYCFC putting on on national television for them for a lot but I don't think it's going to be the same case with the the Red Bulls and I think maybe for a good reason because as I said last season if you watch the 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 Red Bulls you know as a neutral yeah it's it was tough with the way that they were playing some some of the most uninspiring soccer and and we're always involved in, in very bore fast kind of type of game. Though this one is definitely not going to be a bore fest between the Galaxy versus NYCFC. As this game of course will start at 5pm Eastern, 2pm 
Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 2 or 3 uh, local time as this game is going to be on ESPN. Uh, and the reason why I say this is not going to be a board fast is that I expect there should be a lot of offense in this one because these two attack are very, very decent. And the defense itself, I mean, NYCFC, their, their defense, I think, is going to, to, to maybe be the difference because we know the Galaxy defense. Oh boy, I guarantee they are not looking forward to facing against this NYCFC team that absolutely tattoo Santos Guapot. Lays in, in that CCL run, and I know that might be a small sample size, but you know that they 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 are already feeling like they're in mid-season form, and they look at this Galaxy defense being kind of Swiss cheese. They know that they can, of course, take advantage of it. But last season, in terms of the regular season, yeah, Galaxy fans would not want to remember because not only they missed out on the playoffs and decision day once again, but that was the only time they were in eighth place in the standings with a 13, nine, and 12 record and 48 points. While NYCFC, the defending champion, uh, finished in fourth place uh, with a 14-9-11 record and finished with 51 points. But that regular season record doesn't matter because, you know, as I said, they are the def defending champion coming into this one. Now, in terms of the all-time meeting, yeah, NYCFC have absolutely dominated this meeting. Winning the four, four out of the five meeting between both of these teams, including the last three. With them winning 2-0 on the road against the Galaxy, 2-1 at home against the Galaxy, and then winning 2-0 on on the road against the Galaxy. And again, I feel like they're going to be favorites again, especially with the way that, you know, I know both attack is going to be good, but the defense is going to be the difference. And there is no doubt NYCFC have a much superior defense compared to what the Galaxy have currently right now. Now, moving on into the last two match of the Sunday action, we got the Houston Dynamo taking on RSL in one of those rare in, uh, in conference matchup. Again, it's Weird to say that because usually that's kind of the norm in terms of seeing seeing some of the these game, but yeah, this is a this is kind of a rare Western Conference matchup we have on opening the weekend. But yeah, this one will, will start at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 6:08 p.m. local time. Uh, the Dynamo, of course, last season they finished rock bottom for the second year in a row and only won six games last season with a 6-12 and 16 record with 30 points. While for RSL, prior to them making that Cinderella run to the Western Conference Final, they finished in 7th place with a 14-6 and 14 record and finished with 48 points. All-time meeting between both of these teams, it's actually deadlock at 12 wins apiece for both of these teams with 9 draw. In the last free meeting, RSL won 2-1 against Houston before it was a 0-0 draw last time both of these teams was in at, at PNC. C field. I think it's. I think that's how. What, what is it? I. I don't. I don't think it's called PNC Park because I know PNC Park is where 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 the Pittsburgh Pirates play. But I think they they now call call it PNC Field instead of calling it BBVA Compass Stadium. Um. But yeah. And then and then before that, RSL of course drew one one against the the Houston Dynamo. And you know this is also kind of a game that you know I'm, I know some people might not 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 actually actually watch it. It might be one of the lead. The, the less appealing matchup of the week, but we'll see see how, how both of these teams will get going and especially with the way that you know you know for Houston it's gonna be interesting to see see how they're gonna get their rebuild begin and how Paulo little Nakamura is going to do in his first ever game and then for RSL, you know, let's see see if they can maybe follow up that incredible run that they had in the playoffs, which is not gonna be easy because a lot of time when we see teams that go through that Cinderella month run you know, a lot of people will expect you need to, of course, follow that. Or else, some people are going to say that that, of course, is just a com complete fluke. Which, again, I don't think that 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 was was a fluke. That was kind of more like like they 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 were in the right situ situation at the right time to get themselves all the way into the Western Conference Final. But that being said, now moving on into the last game that I'm going to be be talking about in the preview is the game that I'm going to be also attending between the Seattle Sounders versus Nashville SC and I'm shocked that this game is not on national television like when I saw this game on Sunday I thought this was on national television because you have two very good good team last season from the Eastern Conference and now with Nashville moving into the West I would expect that this would at least be a game that could attract national television attention but nope instead this one is going to be on local tv which means that this game will start at 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific and the actual kickoff is 508 p.m local time by the way this is also the first ever meeting between both of these teams and you're going to hear me say that a lot with nashville this se season when they play against their western conference fall because there's still a lot of western conference team nashville has never faced uh against in their 
history. Uh, Seattle last season, uh, they finished second in the Western Conference, as always, with a 17-9-8 record and finished with 60 points. While Nashville, they finished third in the Eastern Conference with a 12-18-4 record and finished with 54 points. And uh, I think I, I, I did hear that they did, did have the fewest loss out of any team in a 34-game season. But they also were tied with, with the most draw draw ever ever with the Chicago Fire uh, uh, in a single season. So that's kind of interesting record for both of them to carry last season coming into this year. But this also is a game where, yeah, you know, for Nashville, I kind of feel bad for them because this game feels like it's baptism by fire with the way that, yeah, welcome back to the Western Conference, Nashville. Your first game is going to be taking on, on the Seattle Sounder, which is a team team that have won multiple MLS Cup in the last couple of years and a team that that just completely fraud Montegua in the last game five nothing at home I mean yeah it's definitely gonna be a daunting task but I have no doubt that you know you know that they're definitely going to put up a fight and especially again I know that even though last season they they lost probably one of their best defender in Alistair Johnston to Montreal I still think this back line is decent. I mean, anytime when you have Walker Zimmerman and in, in your back line, you know he, you know that is a, a decent some back line, and you know they're gonna put up a, a fight against the Seattle team. That again for the Sounders, yes, putting up five past Montego was nice, but this is gonna be a much difficult go ta task, and probably one of the more difficult def defense that they're gonna have to break break down. And one thing we know about Seattle last season is that there's time where they do have have trouble against breaking down tough tough defense which is why you know when you saw in that game against rsl when rsl basically parked the bus against seattle they had a lot of problem in terms of that and we know nashville is a team that not only sometimes they do park the bus on the road but they park the bus good and and sometimes just complete I mean, neutralize a, and a team attack and, and maybe escape with a nil nil draw and that i feel like that could be the same case again i mean if it does end nil nil i'm not going to be that that disappointed because that's what what Nashville will does. Like they they will new, they will try try to to scrap and and find any ways to get a hard fought draw on the road because that's kind of the formula for you to of course make it to the playoffs. You need to of course get get your role role point no matter what happened, especially against a tough tough team on the road. And then you of course get your your home home wins and maybe some road wins against team that you're supposed to be able to win. So yeah, this is a very intriguing game, and I'm definitely excited. To attend this game in person it's also the first time i've been able to walk watch a game at lumens field though i am gonna also have to prepare for for my rain ponchos for this game because i heard that there is a hundred percent chance that this game there's going to be rain that's going to be coming down at lumens field and the the seats that i'm going to be sitting which is actually relatively close to around the center circle uh i think that part of the the stadium is not totally covered i mean i know lumens field it it has a a, a partial roof but i think it only covers like the fir first two two or the the top top two deck but it doesn't actually cover like like the low, lower bowl bowl section or at least not com completely so i gotta have to have my rain poncho re ready for that game but yeah, there we have it. That is pretty much it for the preview of all of these games. And like I said, it's one of the longer ones that I'm I'm going to do in terms of the preview. I mean, in future preview, it's going to be much shorter than what I did in terms of the preview of this video. But it's still definitely shorter compared to last season where I think if I did a preview of, of all 14 of these games last season, this preview would probably would be like 45 or even 50 minutes long. But as I said, I'm trying to shorten the preview. Maybe that, of course... Uh, get some some more viewership and i also want to just kind of be a little bit more clean in terms of putting just the stats n number and not make the board look an absolutely mess whenever ever, ever people watch this preview because after all you know when you you watch a, a preview you know not only you want to watch me talk but you know you don't also want to watch this board that would just makes makes you gone crazy think that i gone absolutely crazy and stuff like that but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys see a like smash the subscribe button let me know in the comments below what do you think of these 14 games that's going to be happening in the opening weekend of the mls season and also let me know in the comments your prediction for all of these game of the opening weekend of the mls season but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time